morning, everybody. We're here in Calgary. We've got to roll ourselves down to Lethbridge, Alberta today. Tomorrow morning is Monday morning. We're going to pick up some utility trailers and bring them back home and uh, see where the world's at at that point. That'll be Tuesday when I get back home. Uh, I'll go in and talk to work, see how it's looking. And if it's still looking kind of promising, this truck's got to go into the shop, get an injector replaced, or at least looked at. It might just be wiring. Uh, I don't know what to say other than that. We don't know. This world's pretty crazy right now. So remember, I am filming this a few days up to a week beforehand. So the information I talk about today might be old news to you because it changes by the hour. So just a little reminder of that. This was where I was at a few days ago. So let's get trucking. We only have about two hours to go today. What do you think, Diesel? Well, I gotta give you your food yet. We're gonna feed the weasel, then we're gonna go. Hey, everybody. We're here in Grenfell, Saskatchewan, on our way back home. And I figured I would just make this whole trip home uh, one video, so it's two days into one. Uh, starting this new day now, and I'm just surprised again, waking up and being like one of the last ones in the parking lot. I wasn't the last one here. And I woke up once again with just enough, like, with, with enough time to wake myself up, you know, go wash my face, wash my hands, and uh, grab a coffee, and then I gotta do my pre-trip, so legally I can't even move the truck yet. So how is everybody else that got here after me gone already? I, this guy here, the black guy, this, this black truck here, behind Diesel's big head, who are you calling your big head, mate? That guy was here, uh, after me. So that's the only guy who was who was still sleeping, who should still be sleeping, because everybody else got here. Where'd everybody go? You legally couldn't, there's no way they could have left already. I can't even legally move yet, and they got here after me. I mean, sometimes there's a, a way you can get going sooner. Uh, you can work your logbook in a way that can legally do that. I, I understand that, but all of them? Every single one of them? Like, again. And notice, I only noticed this in Canada where the e-logs haven't been mandated yet. That's supposed to come through this year or next year, it'll be mandated up here. But anyone who travels down to the US, we are mandated to have log books that are electronic. So obviously all these guys don't go to the US, or maybe they just run on paper logs when they're up here. It worries me to see this, it really does. Because you know that people are not following the rules. Unless if I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. None of my business, they say. Okay. None of my business. All right. So let's get everything going here. We've got to do our pre-trip. Go to walk a weasel. Yeah, man. And then we're going to go home. You want to go home? You want to go see Mom and Chevy and Frankie and Wiener? You want to go home? Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Let's go home. So it's a beautiful day out here. Pretty quiet, but... That's the way everything is nowadays, huh? I'll show you this real quick. We got two, two dump trailers up here. I'd love to have one of these. I really would. And we got two utility trailers behind that. Essential utility trailers. So I posted a link on my Facebook page uh, to a site called Worldo, Worldometers or something like that. Worldometers. And it's keeping track as best it can of the virus as it spreads throughout the world, which countries are affected, how many new cases each country has, how many new deaths it has, and it resets every day and gives you the totals to show you how many new cases and deaths happen within 24 hours. And now, within the past, what, 18 hours, the U.S. has risen by 7,500 cases, up to 50,000. By the time you watch this, it may have been probably higher than that. Canada, we're still sitting pretty low right now. Um, what the site does is it also shows you the, uh, the number of people per million that are affected. So it sort of gives you more of a per capita number. Italy's still doing pretty bad. China's apparently passed it. 
yeah, right, they're just not reporting it, in my opinion. Or they have the cure, and they've had the cure this whole time. I mean, that's the only way it could have just stopped dead in its tracks, right? But, whatever, it's, I'm not an expert. I'll let other people figure that out. But yeah, we're, uh, we're headed home. We've got a hold of the shop. Uh, looks like I'll be bringing it there after hours today, and they'll probably start working on it tomorrow. Hopefully it's just like a wiring issue or maybe like a, an injector cup or something. Gotta get my transmission fluid changed as well because that's been given uh, its time in my water pump. So it's, uh, you know, when it rains, it pours. When it pours, the cloud bursts and it just gushes. That's okay. I mean, we all got, we all, we're all in the same boat right now. All in the same boat. So I'm here in uh, Manitoba now. Oh, it's central Manitoba. We're getting close to Portage La Prairie. And I'm very happy to see that at least half of the snow has melted away. I'm very happy to see that spring is around the corner. It's something to look forward to. There's only a few things in this world to look forward to right now. Each day is sort of a, it's a white knuckle kind of day, right? Let's just hope for the best. But at least uh, things are getting warmer, eh? Hopefully that helps. I'm not sure what Britt and I have planned. I know she's still working uh, for as long as she can. So uh, I might, I might run into Winnipeg tomorrow, run a few errands, get a few things done, pick up a few things, stock up on a few things. I'll take you along with me. It'll be fun. I'll show you what the shelves look like in Winnipeg. They keep getting restocked pretty quickly, but it clears out even faster, it seems. We're still on the hunt for hand sanitizer. I'm making my own, don't worry. I still have some, and then I have plenty enough supplies to, of gel and rubbing alcohol to make my own, but it's almost become like a, a game to me in a sense. You know, every store I go into, I always go to the hand sanitizer aisle to see if I can find any. So far, no luck. It's just sort of hand sanitizer vlogger and hand sanitizer journal. The date is March 20th. There is still no hand sanitizer. Anywhere, I have stopped at 25 stores and it has been cleared out. It is the hand sanitizer apocalypse of 2020. I don't blame people for buying it because when I find some, I'm gonna buy it too. <laughs> just so that I have some, you know? I always have some in all the vehicles and at home and stuff. I always make sure there's some there, but I gotta restock sooner or later and it's hard to find it. How are you guys doing? Still doing good? Look at this, look at all the snow is almost gone here. This is like 75% gone. It's getting even better. Might have to start up the old lawnmower soon. Get the old beast running again for the season. Here. What's taking you so long? Look at all that food that's still left in there. So this one inhales it. I don't. I don't even know if he's chewed one bit. I don't think he's chewed any of it. And Diesel chews and enjoys every single morsel. Step out your pace yourself, man. 
ace yourself. You can enjoy it longer. Shall we? I didn't even taste it. Can I have some of yours, Diesel? And he's done. He's a slower eater. Not as slow as our foster boy, though. This guy over here. He sets Guinness World Records. We gotta sit here and uh, every single meal and coax him to eat, help him out. Usually takes about a half hour at least, every meal. Sorry to put you on the spot here, bud. Man, you're embarrassing me. Do you wanna come? For some reason, it, he just doesn't like eating. It's not his favorite thing to do. This little guy, the wiener over here, who's like freaking out. Mom's has food up there. He's faster than Chevy. He will inhale it. We have to uh, soak it so that it goes down his throat easier. Otherwise, he tries to eat it so fast that it gets stuck in his throat and it could scratch up his throat. Yeah, he's had, he's had some instances, some incidents. Incidents? Yeah, and then he almost starts choking. So we soak it for him so that it, it just goes down smoother, but man, he, he gobbles it right down. Okay, here we go. You wanna see, wanna see? Not much light bit, in here. A little bit dark in there, yeah. Yeah, although I'll have to just- Wait, you wait. You guys see it? It might be a little dark. Ah, 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 ah. You wait. No, don't do tricks for it. Wait. Okay. I wish we had a light under there to show you guys. Chevy? He's almost done. Almost. Almost done? Just about there. It's like a race against time. <laughs> I'm a dog, I only have about 15 years or so. Come to make every moment count. I installed these lights under here recently. Maybe that'll help. Now, once I put this on a YouTube, it always takes, it darkens it on its own for some reason. Yeah, when people can't that? see him. It well, it's, me. YouTube always does that and you can't lighten it properly. Done? Yep. Good Just boy. Clean it out. Now that everyone else is finished, we have to sit down and work with Big Frank to get him to eat. Yeah, it takes Every a meal. lot of family team, team spirit to get him to go. Chevy has to lay there patiently and watch or else he won't eat. And yeah. yeah, it's no noises, no sudden movements. Or yeah, just stop and walk away. Yeah, whoever's on the floor feeding him has to sit there and constantly try to get him to keep eating, and whoever's not feeding him has to sit perfectly still and not make any noise. <laughs> any little noise will distract him, and we're done. Then he doesn't eat. He likes it. It's like a game for him. He's got complete control of us. <laughs> but it is dark outside already, so I've spent the day waiting for the truck. I did get word back from them that I'm supposed to be getting the truck back tomorrow. We're not sure. Uh, the valves were completely out of adjustment, apparently. And uh, a few other things needed adjustment. So pretty much my motor, my, my engine just needed a tune-up. So we didn't need to replace the injector, thank goodness. It was just a, a pretty well-needed overdue tune-up. And uh, so they got that done, they started it up, it worked great, and then suddenly it just didn't want to stay running. You got your alarm going off over here, Britt. Oh! Supposed to remember something? My pill. My thyroid pill. Heh, <laughs> Chevy. But yeah, then the truck didn't want to stay running. They couldn't keep the engine running. And then they found out that there was no fuel pressure. And the only problem they could find with that was that the fuel filter housing, uh, there's a valve in there that was most likely sticking because once they uh, manually went in to pressurize the fuel to push the fuel through suddenly it started working again it started working just fine and they called me up told me what was going on they said they sort of wanted to keep it there overnight and check on it in the morning and see if it was still running okay or if it was going to cause problems again so that's where we're at now so it, everything is fixed now other than that so they're gonna check on it in the morning see if it acts up again if it does then we can fix it from there but if not Guess we got our truck back. It's, it's been a rough couple of months with the truck being in the shop so much. But as long as this fuel filter housing isn't going to give me problems in the future, it's 
I think we're done with the shop for a while. Uh, that's what I say every time, but this time, for real. Done with the shop. I'm done with it. Chevy, what do you think? I'm gonna start making you fix my truck. How about that? So, we can't really leave the house, just like you. So we're trying to keep ourselves entertained and busy. Britt made a fang, fa a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic Fang meal. I didn't put any teeth in it. <laughs> uh, well, what do you call that? It's a stir fry? Not a stir fry. <laughs> Chicken and broccoli casserole. Chicken and broccoli casserole. The only other people that I know of that have had the privilege of eating it are my cousin Chris, cousin Chris and Tanya. It's a meal I grew up with. My mom always made it, so I always loved it. And you know how to make it perfect. Oh, it's so easy. You have a gift. Thank you. So we're gonna try to fill up our time here with games, I guess. We're gonna play Uno. You guys ever play Uno? You know what Uno is? I don't. I know what it is, but every time I... We don't play cards that often. We should play games more often. I know. We did over Christmas break, we played that uh, Christmas trivia. That's game. true, yeah, we haven't played more games. We played that quite a few times. So I'm excited, we're gonna play some Uno. Are you gonna show them your casserole? You like went from one topic Where to another. Where is it? Where's my casserole? Oh, it's refrigerated. You weren't eating yet, so I put yours away. Oh, there it is, there it is. Oh. You guys have no idea how good that is right there. Oh. All it is is chicken breast, broccoli, one can of cream of chicken soup, one can of cream of mushroom soup. If you don't like mushrooms, you can just put two cans of cream of chicken. Um, a half a cup of butter mixed into, like heated up, and mixed into a bag of crushed original Ritz crackers. And then a whole bunch of cheddar cheese on top, and then you bake it. But pre-cook the chicken, guys. You know, we should make a blog out of it for your channel when you do make stuff like that. They've all been asking. They've all been asking what's what's going on with Britt's beat. Told you I'd talk to her about it. I'll be filming some stuff now that I'm on self quarantine. Gotta do something, right? May as well keep you guys in the loop. Like, hey guys, still living. Woo. <laughs> Just know that a lot of time and effort goes into her videos because I take the computer with me on the road to edit my videos <laughs> and the, she uses the backup computer that stays at home and it's slow. It is ancient slow. It's like 1995 slow. So to edit a video, like aside from filming it and everything, it takes her hours and hours and hours. So they're very special. <laughs> and yeah. there was a lot of patience that went into it. It was like a minimum of uh, on a really good day when the computer was running at like top notch, four hours for like a 12 minute vlog. It was... Four hours of just waiting for the computer to load. Just sitting there and I trying not it. to throw it I through a window. It. So that's one of the reasons why it sort of discouraged her from making more videos was that we don't have a very good second computer. And we'll get there, we'll get one yet. Can't complain. But uh, once this is all over, we have plans to upgrade but for now it's takes some time and effort so the link to her channel is down below every one of my videos if you didn't know this now you know you can go and subscribe there and good news we have the truck back it's a good feeling my soul is at peace and whole again and the price wasn't too bad I mean it hurt but it, it wasn't too it was 1700 bucks so it, uh, it stung, but it was manageable right now. I was really worried that it was gonna get up into multiple thousands, so this was a nice relief. So they checked out the engine, and I remember I had a vibration in the engine, and I thought it was the injector. Uh, the good news is, is it wasn't the injector. Uh, it just needed a valve adjustment. That's all it needed. So here's the long list of things that they did here uh, for the engine system. I'll read it out here for you so you know what they did. Uh, they said, oh, I brought it in for a check engine, uh, vibration, and smoking. I didn't tell them it was smoking, but they must have just added that in there. Uh, customer suspects injector fault. That's what I told them. So here's what they did. Bear with me. They took the unit for a test drive, found turbo surging, and not maintaining boost. Unit has an engine vibration. Yes, it did. 
uh, connected di diagnostic computer and checked faults. Found inactive fault for cylinder one offset. That's, that's the one. Performed sensor monitor and verified proper sensor readings. Performed EGR cooler check with spool down test multiple times. Verified EGR cooler not plugged. Removed turbo actuator. That's what we got replaced last time we were in Langley there. That was a brand new part. Uh, they just removed it and inspected sector shaft. Verified no faults. We better not have any faults. We just replaced that. Uh, calibrated turbo and reinstalled the actuator. So that was all good. Removed boost pressure sensor and inspected. Verified it wasn't plugged. Connected test sensor and compared values. Verified sensor value did not change. Performed basic advanced air and fuel tests. Found air in the fuel. That was one of my problems. They inspected the Davco. Found debris under the O-ring. Cleaned and reassembled the Davco filter. Repeated basic air and fuel test. Verified no further air in the fuel. And they performed cylinder balancing test. Found cylinder one at 70%. Performed electronic compression test. During compression test, found batteries were low. Uh, they must have just had them on for a while because those are brand new. Uh, anyways, checked battery connections. Found the master switch connections loose. I've been having a lot of problems with batteries. They fixed that, charged the batteries. Repeated electronic compression test. Found cylinder six, low compression. Removed air filter housing and ducting, brackets and piping, and removed valve cover. Loosened engine cover, no, no, loosened engine brake rocker springs and checked valve clearances. Found valves tight on multiple cylinders, let engine cool down. Performed valve adjustment, found exhaust valves on all cylinders tight and intake valve for cylinder six tight. Reinstalled all previously removed parts. Performed electronic compression test. Found cylinders now reading within specification and found EECU software update available and performed that update. Started the engine and inspected, found engine ticking. Started the engine and inspected, found engine ticking. Removed air filter housing and ducting, brackets and piping and removed valve cover. Unbolted and removed the rocker shaft. Removed all VCB pistons and inspected, found all pistons loose. Secured all VCB pistons with Loctite and reassembled. Installed rocker shaft assembly and performed valve adjustment. Reinstalled all previously removed parts. Connected diagnostic computer. Found the soot load was at 92%. Moved the unit outside and started stationary regen. Found regen temperatures within specification. Regen completed with no faults. Cleared faults and took the unit for a test drive. Verified the repair. And that was that. And then for the water pump, they... Uh, they just replaced the water pump for me as well. So that was a, a long list of things they did to fix my, my engine vibration, but I'm glad they were able to fix that and that it wasn't the injector because those injectors are just under $1,000 each here in Canada. And if I had to replace them all with labor, that would be six to $7,000. So let's just be thankful it wasn't that. That's why I was kind of happy with just this. So it, it was manageable for now. We can keep the truck running uh, and keep making money with it. So I'm leaving on a trip tomorrow. We have a load of lumber that's going down to Wisconsin. And from Wisconsin, we have a load that's taking us over to Ontario. And then we have a load from Ontario lined up already that's taking us back here. I think it's going through to Alberta. So uh, we got our next week planned out already. So I'm glad I got the truck back. I guess we'll take it from here. Feel a lot better. Feel a lot better to have it back. I hate it when my truck's in the shop. It just drives me nuts. All's good now.